We need both fluency and better conceptual understanding. Unfortunately, this literature is not making its way into educational decision-making and policies because we have still got these ongoing math wars that seem to be happening, seem to be coming up all of the time, time and time again. And I want to argue here that neither the proponents of the extreme, uh, just basic skills, fluency, or the proponents that say, do away with fluency, but just focus on conceptual. I'm going to argue that neither of them are right, and that taking, adopting such extreme positions is not consistent with the evidence that we've got. The math was recently resurfaced in Canada, and it was in reaction to that PISA study that I talked about earlier. PISA, by the way, assesses 15-year-olds' preparedness for adult life. I'll go back to the appropriateness of using PISA to make any conclusions about the curriculum uh, later on as well, because I think that's also uh, maybe sometimes a bridge too far. But what we see, what we saw in the PISA study is that for the first time when it came to math, Canada slipped out of the top 10. I should also note here that Canada is still very high up, significantly above the PISA average. Canada is, you know, I've, I've had the privilege to visit the OECD. The OECD thinks Canada is fantastic when it comes to education. So we should acknowledge that as well. There is a drop in performance here, but Canada is still doing very well in these international comparisons such as the PISA study. But nevertheless, this PISA study led to, you know, a lot of reaction that was well documented in the media. For example, here's an article, the headline, Canada students slipping in math and science, the OECD finds, uh, you know, Canada falls in math education, setting off alarm bells, uh, Canada drops out of the top 10 in international math education settings, and, you know, immediately a fall guy needs to be found. Who's, who's at fault here? Who, wh how can we make sense of this? What, what is the fall guy? And the fall guy invariably became discovery math, or new math, whatever you want to call it. This notion that, you know, we should work with our students on concepts, develop their understanding, develop their thinking skills. All, by the way, I think extremely laudable goals, using math as a vehicle to develop thinking and reflective and metacognitive skills. Um, you know, petitions on change.org, fear from Alberta, back to basics, mastering fundamentals of mathematics. So advocating that we need to do away with what we've done before and go back to, you know, uh, drill and kill and uh, focus on the development of fluency and basic mathematical skills. Um, Canada's math teachers should get back to basic reports. So there was a C.D. Howe uh, report uh, that was written by Anna Stocky of the University of Winnipeg. I think she makes a lot of good points, but for me it goes a little bit too far to the other extreme because the evidence that I showed you before is that you need both and that they inform each other iteratively. So we need to somehow quit this swinging pendulum and make sure it settles somewhere in the middle and that we use the best evidence from cognitive psychologists, sure, also from neuroscience, to inform our decision making rather than to go by emotional reactions to some kind of uh, test results that are suggesting that standards are slipping. And here I want to talk briefly about the PISA study and whether the PISA study is actually appropriate in and of itself for making any conclusions about the quality of the curriculum. And I want you to, I just want to read this out to you. This is from the PISA website. PISA is unique because it develops tests which are not directly linked to the school curriculum. The tests are designed to assess what, to what extent students at the end of compulsory education can apply their knowledge to real life situation and be equipped for full participation in society. So what you see here is that the PISA study is not a test of the quality of the curriculum. For that, you need to go to the TIM study. That is an international comparison study that aligns to the curriculum. So even you know, using the PISA study to make any implications about curriculum and curriculum change, in my opinion, is a little bit of a bridge too far. We need to look at the intermediate layers uh, between them. We've known for more than a decade that procedural skills and conceptual understanding interact over developmental time. And they're both important to learning. Let's heed the evidence rather than the opinions. And this is true in many education domain. Uh, Steve Masson is doing some wonderful work on reading where there have also been debates around whole word versus phonologically based approaches. Again, you need both. And critically, you need to take a developmental perspective on when to instruct what and what is important 
important at what level of development and uh, for which child. So I think my take home message here is let's stop the math wars. Let's use the evidence and let's try to build a balanced approach. Let's harness the quality that's uh, within the conceptual approaches as well as the approaches that maybe emphasize more procedural skills and realize that both competencies iterate over developmental time. And I, in case you're interested in this, you've all got it in your bags, the Education Canada uh, issue that accompanies this event. I've got an article here in which I have summarized some of this evidence, and there are references to the papers as well that uh, demonstrate empirically that these two skills are related uh, to one another.